Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Cozine. And I'm Tracy McRae. When it comes to treating brain cancer, radiation therapy is one of the best tools to kill cancer cells, but it's not without consequence. Loss of cognitive function as a result of brain radiation is one common side effect. New research at Mayo Clinic is offering hope. A new approach to whole brain radiation, which avoids the hippocampus area of the brain, is showing results in preserving cognitive function and preventing memory loss. These findings were presented recently at the 2018 Annual Meeting of the American Society for Radiation Oncology, or ASTRO. And here to discuss is the senior author of the study, Mayo Clinic Radiation Oncologist, Dr. Paul Brown. Welcome to the program, Dr. Brown. It's nice to meet you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. This is really exciting news. Yes, it is. It's a big advance. It's been based off of several decades of work. So it's neat to see this come to fruition. So tell us a little bit about brain tumors, first of all. How common are they? And then what's the difference between a primary and a secondary? That's a great question. The brain metastasis arise from a primary cancer. So for example, lung cancer, uh, breast cancer, melanoma. They spread through the blood system and then go to the brain and then they grow there. Uh, and uh, it's a very serious situation. If left untreated, they can be fatal in just a couple months. Uh, that's quite different from a primary brain tumor that develops in the brain itself. Uh, brain metastasis, they're very common. There's approximately 200,000 patients diagnosed with brain metastasis in the United States each year. Uh, whole brain radiation therapy has been the primary treatment for this disease process since the 1950s. But we've recently learned that about half of patients develop cognitive deficits after whole brain radiation therapy. Uh, so we obviously need to do better for our patients. And is whole brain radiation the standard of care, whether it's a primary or a secondary tumor? It's only standard of care for if it's a secondary tumor. That's okay. correct. Yeah, so for brain metastasis. I've always wondered, how is it that uh, when you have a brain tumor, you have to have chemotherapy that's so strong it can get past that blood-brain barrier, but yet a cancer can metastasize to the brain, it seems, fairly easily. Am I getting that wrong, or is that what, does that happen? You're correct. Yeah, brain, there's certain, certain primary diseases that frequently do go to the brain, and the ones I named were, uh, were lung, breast melanoma. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason, we don't understand all the reasons. There's some where it's quite rare. So examples where it'd be quite rare would be prostate cancer, for mm -hmm. example. So there's a, there, it's a, there's a widespread difference between the different primary types. If we could just get that blood-brain barrier to figure out, hey, don't let this tumor in, that would be better. The, <laughs> yeah. There's actually investigators working on prevention, and uh, one of the biggest areas of prevention right now are uh, the systemic therapies or the targeted therapies. They're showing some uh, significant advancements in preventing the development of brain metastasis. So that's actually, you're correct, that's the most important step. All yeah. right, the both of you know this yeah. because you're both doctors. I don't know anything because I'm just the layperson, but what is the hippocampus and why is it important? I was actually hoping for a little review on that myself. <laughs> it's an interesting structure. It's named after uh, the seahorse because it resembles that. Oh, wow. Uh, we have two of them. They both are in the medial temporal lobes. Uh, they run along the temporal lobes. They're a very small structure. They're only about three to four cc's, so that's 2% mm. of the entire brain. Mm -hmm. Although they're very small, uh, they are very important. Uh, we need them basically to form memories or to learn new information. Uh, so basically, if, you, if your hippocampal structure is not working, you cannot form new memories. Most of our understanding about the hippocampus came from probably the most famous patient in neurosciences, Mr. H.M., as mm -hmm. he's called. As a young man, he suffered a bike accident and developed seizures that progressively worsened as he got older. And by the age of 23, um, really were incapacitating for him, even with medication. Uh, he saw several specialists. This is back in 1957, so a long time mm -hmm. ago. And uh, they decided that they would resect the medial temporal lobes on both sides. And uh, after they performed the surgery, he did have success. His seizures were controlled, he maintained his intelligence, uh, but he immediately had anterograde amnesia. In other words, he could never form any new memories. Oh, man. So he was able to maintain his long-term memories and his intelligence. And with these deficits, uh, he was studied for the next five decades until he died in his 80s. And uh, we learned a, a lot from him. A lot of it was because of the dedication of investigators, but really it was because of Mr. H.M. He was known as a very kind and generous man, 
and his goal was always to help others so that if they could learn from him and help others, uh, other patients, that was his goal. Yeah, that's really interesting. And so in traditional treatment, the entire brain was radiated. And what sort of results did that have? Yep. A- as mentioned earlier, it's a pretty high rate of cognitive deficits on the order of more than half of patients. And we learned over the past few decades through animal studies and so preclinical data that the hippocampus uh, is important besides just memory for a few functions. Uh, one it would be neurogenesis or the formation of new neurons, even in the adult brain. When I went to medical school, which is a, quite a while ago, we were taught that there was no neurogenesis in the adult brain, but that has since been changed. Oh. Yeah. And although it's still a controversy. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing we've learned is that the hippocampus is exquisitely sensitive to radiation therapy. So based off of that information, we developed these radiation techniques that are very advanced, where you treat the whole brain with radiation therapy, but you avoid the hippocampal region. How can you do that? Yeah. yeah. It's with a, uh, it's a very advanced technique called intensity modulated radiation uh, therapy. Uh, you're using computer algorithms that look at tens of thousands of algorithms to pick the best plan for the patient. Although radiation centers are comfortable doing IMRT, this is probably more than they typically do. So when we did the study, we actually had an independent group review each center's uh, treatment planning delivery system. That included physics. And then we had a group of experts that reviewed every radiation plan. And we'd not uncommonly would contact the center and have them change the plan. So this is this is very technical. Yeah. Could you back us up just a little bit as and yeah. tell us, you know, who are these patients that were in this study? Who were, yep. who were you studying? And Great question. So this is a study we launched a few years ago. Uh, it was over 500 patients in North America. They had brain metastasis. It could be from any primary. The majority of the patients, which is common, it's actually common uh, from a disease standpoint in the United States, where the brain metastasis were from lung cancer. Next would be breast, and then the others follow. So... I just need to go back a second because did you tell me that you did you just say you used math to figure out how to avoid the hippocampus? Is that what you just said? <laughs> Smart, so we should pay attention in math. <laughs> Smarter people than wow. myself did that. Yes, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, what are the results? You said some of the people yeah. you changed their treatments. What else did you learn? That's exactly right. So, uh, for the study, half of the patients received hippocampal avoidance whole brain radiation therapy with a medicine called memantine. An earlier study had shown that memantine, which is often used to treat dementia, had some cognitive benefits. Mm -hmm. And then we compared that to half of the patients received standard whole brain with memantine. And the patients that received hippocampal avoidance um, whole brain with memantine has significantly better cognitive function compared to those that receive standard whole brain radiation therapy. Now here's a question about the treatment. And I think some of our listeners might think, well, why don't you just radiate those little spots that are there? That, that Excellent question. So uh, that's typically our preference. For patients that have limited number of brain metastasis, we would just do focused radiation. Uh, that's called radiosurgery. Is There's, that using our old friend, the proton beam? Uh, that would be using something called the gamma knife. Okay. And you probably have maybe have heard, heard of that. I have heard of that yep. as well, yes. There's other devices as well, okay. cyber knife and so forth. Uh, but for a number of patients, they'll have so many uh, metastasis, it's not viable to treat uh, with a radiosurgery device. So is this going to change the care of patients all over the world? Yes, uh, in, in a number of ways. And at the very beginning of the conversation, you kind of alluded to that. Uh, so for patients that will be needing whole brain radiation therapy to treat their brain metastasis, hippocampal avoidance, whole brain, and will be the standard. But also, as you mentioned earlier, for people with primary brain tumors, we now know that it's important to avoid the hippocampal Mm -hmm. region. So that's actually going to shape our radiation therapy plans, which will help those patients as well. That's great. It's amazing. Well, we've been talking with Mayo Clinic radiation oncologist, Dr. Paul Brown, about preserving cognitive function for brain tumor patients who undergo radiotherapy. Thank you so much, Dr. Brown. Thank you. It's my pleasure.